Greetings heroes, adventurers, soul survivors. I am the Ancient Gamer and in this video I'm going to show you a mod I found for Fallout 4 that is really interesting. It's very well made and very detailed. Doesn't crash your game. It's a solid mod made by a, a solid mod author and it's called the TES-51 Power Armor Skyrim Inspired. And essentially what it does is it drops a power armor into your game that uh, has an Elder Scrolls look and feel to it um, it definitely, definitely still looks like Fallout, but you know, let's face it, it's not real lore friendly, but um, it is pretty cool. And it's a little bit more lore friendly than it could be because the mod author was A, creative enough, and B, clever enough to create a sort of backstory in terms of how you get the mod, how you get the power armor, that it sort of makes it feel like it makes a little bit more sense, you know, in the Commonwealth and in the, the world of Fallout. Um, but before we go any further, I'd like to implore you to hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the Ancient Gamer channel. It always feels good. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is download the mod from Bethesda.net and it's just Xbox One TES 51 Power Armor. Then once you do that, you'll find that you have a new map icon on your map. It's for Bethesda Comics. It's down south of, on the south, south, southern part of the map, kind of down by Diamond City, only over to the east. And you'll be able to fast travel to that right away. You don't need to discover it or anything. Just you know, go ahead and click on it, and you can fast travel right to it, which is it's nice and convenient. And um, I would suggest that you have a melee weapon ready to go. All I had was the lame-ass security baton. Um, but, it, it, you know, it worked. It did the trick. And also maybe some Rad X and Rad Away, uh, a couple stim packs, because once you get in here, you're going to be attacked by just massive swarms of Rad Roaches that attack the place and apparently have taken up a uh, host in here. Um, and when I say massive waves, I mean massive waves. I mean, they just keep coming and coming and coming. And all you can really do is uh, sit back and keep swinging until they stop coming. And it takes a while. Right when you think you've got them knocked out, another wave comes at you. But it's really worth it because um, the backstory here is that Bethesda Comics, uh, the publisher of Bethesda Comics, the Stan Lee of Bethesda Comics, was Todd Howard. Um, and they published a comic, and Pete Hines, and they published a comic book called Skyrim in the pre-war days. And their pet project in the basement was this power armor that you're going to find. And each comic that you find, there's three of them in total, and they, they each unlock a different aspect of the armor um, or a different modification that you can do at the power armor station. So there's the second one. And then, of course, you always look around. There's lots of little trinkets and things like that to populate the, uh, the office here. Um, off to a side door, there's an elevator that you take down to the basement. Um, and of course dog meat, you know, he'll only glitch in and out of the elevator two or three times on the way down. And then you're in the Sanctum Sanctorum, which is really kind of cool. Look at that. There's even a, you know, there's even a dragon shout down here. Very Skyrim inspired. There's the armor, the base armor, kind of like unmodified and grungy. That's how you find it. And then uh, you're going to want to grab the Bethesda Comics basement key. Here's another cool goodie that you get too, a steel warhammer right out of Skyrim. And it's pretty much an exact replica of Skyrim steel warhammer. In fact, it might even look better than the steel warhammer in Skyrim. And it's the real deal. It's a really efficient little melee, little melee weapon. Then uh, off into the cage here, and this is where all the goodies are. You'll find a letter over here from Todd Howard to Pete Hines explaining how sorry he is for having not been able to leave the armor. He wanted to go down with the ship. And it uh, just gives a nice little backstory to this armor and how it came about. It's a little on the silly side, but it's really kind of neat too. Very clever. You take everything you find in here. Now this lock is an expert lock, so you'll want to have a few lock picks around with you and you'll need to have your, you know, at least three of the four lock picking perks to get in there. Um, but then there's more goodies in here and another you know, set of the armor. You can actually take this as well as the one out there on the armor stand. So you'll get two. So you can have two variations rolling at once once you get the armor back to your base. And that there is the skeleton of Todd Howard. That must be how he meets his final, his final end in the alternate reality that is the Fallout 4 universe. 
The third comic book is down there by the, by the sleeping bag on the floor. And it unlocks the Hot Rodder Flames variant as well as the backpack mode. And I, I actually really like just the plain basic armor. It looks dirty and rusty like it's 200 years old and has been just sitting there collecting dust. And that's pretty cool. Now back to the Warhammer. Watch this baby at work. Holy shit, that's kick ass. Just two hits. Bye bye Super Mutant. It might be just a tad overpowered, but I don't think too bad. <laughs> but it really does its thing. Here we'll wander around Boston a little bit more, trying to find a couple more people to, to skull crush. A couple more, maybe some raiders or something. And there we go. Bam, one hit. Then we have this nasty, pesky turret. Smunch. No problem. Yeah, and see, I, I actually really, I was already fond of this armor right away looking at it. It does look like, it looks like you pieced it together yourself in the basement of Bethesda Comics. It's pretty cool. And then once you get it back to Sanctuary or wherever your power armor station is of choice, you know, it's got the full complement of, you know, armor modifications that you can do to it, the different linings and coatings and things, but also Skyforge Steel and Nordic War Paint um, options that are there that are part of the mod. They give a sort of a unique look to the skin. Now, this is actually my favorite. I really like the Skyforge Steel. It just has sort of a flat matte steel finish, but you'll notice that the detail work is just phenomenal. The etching on here is pretty much identical to that that you'll find on steel armor in Skyrim, and it just has a neat look to it. I like this one. This is my personal favorite. And then here's the Nordic War Paint variant. And I think for most people, this will probably be their favorite. And it's really good, too. I just was really fond of the Skyforge Steel. It's got that little atomic backpack thing going on there, which is pretty neat. And I think it, it increases your carrying capacity a little bit, too. And just like on the, you know, the Skyforge Steel, the detail work is incredible here. Really, really well done. Well rendered. This is a really well-made mod. The mod author knows what they're doing. And here's a little spinny, twisty, twirly visionette for you of the two different armors. The two different main armors. Skyforge Steel. And then Nordic War Paint. Dog meat likes it. And then here is the, I figured I'd show you the Hot Rod, the Hot Rod Flames variant. Not my favorite because it's the least lore friendly, but you know, a lot of people are gonna like this and it is really good. You know, the, the, the textures and the paint and all just, just looks fantastic, it looks excellent. And once again, the detail work is phenomenal. But that's pretty much it for TES 51 Skyrim inspired power armor. Um, it's, a, it's an excellent mod if you like it. Um, it doesn't crash your game. And it's, ex and it's extremely well made and adds a little variation to your power armor game. I am the Ancient Gamer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please make it happy. Give it a like. It really helps. Looking for more of a long-term commitment? Subscribe to the Ancient Gamer channel and ring the bell. It always feels good. Remember, it's all about the games we play and love and love to play. It's all about the games.